And hey guys, welcome back to Call hello, Conversation hello, hello, hello. with me, Rick. And me, Nain. And our special guest today is Mark Cardenas. 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 There you See, go. See, I hate it when we have these guys who have these <laughs> things because I keep messing it up every time. Dude, but you're Spanish. You, you, In a way, you're Spanish. Dude, I'm American. I'm, uh, that's why you don't hear the, the <laughs> Filipino. You grew up in San Francisco. You, you don't hear the Filipino accent in my voice. How do you not have... Yeah. Okay. I California, don't... San Francisco. Come on, man. Dude, come on. I can't even do Rico with a way. That's true. <laughs> Anyways, Mike, <laughs> welcome. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank Sorry, you. that was a bit of a domestic. So, no, that's funny. I mean, one time I came here on a trip mm -hmm. for a company. We came in. They, my uh, company I worked for actually paid for us to stay here, and I went to go check in. <coughs> she goes, name, and I said, Michael Cardenas, and I gave her, you know, whatever uh -huh. packet I had, and I gave it to her. She's all, she looked up, and she stopped, and she says, it's... Garden of the Nas. Oh man, she's correcting you. <laughs> yeah. You? And I said, I said, well, how, you know. And then I, I got offended. I was like, oh, how would you know? She goes, because I am a Garden of the Nas. I was like, okay, well. Okay, hi sis. Yeah. yeah it's like, well, whatever, however that means you want to say. Get the room for free. That's funny. Yeah. I know. You know what I do just to piss people off. Yeah. Everybody said Ramos, and I said, no, it's Ramos. And then they said, Ramos, I said, no, it's Ramos. Yeah. <laughs> I just go back and forth, yeah. pissing them off, like, God damn it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Whichever hey, it is, you got to go the opposite. What's in the name, right? Yeah. That's yeah. right. It's hilarious. Right. Really so let me ask you this, Mike. Yes. Um, before today, we have never met you. That's right. But I'll tell you what, your name comes up a lot of times in conversation. Uh -oh. So because of that, mm -hmm. I want to know why. <laughs> so do I. <laughs> Maybe we we're asking out. the wrong person. Maybe, oh, we, can, the wrong guy. maybe we can find out together. Well, no, it, it's crazy because, you know, I started seeing you and hearing about you through the stuff that we all do, you know, yeah. through um, Dennis's um, pages mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and some of the gatherings. I hear your name. Um, your your uh, late master, Art Gonzalez, was an awesome guy. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if I've ever seen you at one of the gatherings. Were you there? Were I you know. There? We've seen I've, him. I went uh, to a couple of them. Yeah. But that was early on. A couple of them I had wandered around and <coughs> took film for for him and yeah we were the, uh, the first one we went to the first one that I saw was about the very first one we went to 2015 yeah 2015 around there maybe 2014 mm, I might have been there and he has such a relaxed way of teaching it okay so we're gonna do this and we're gonna go like that yeah. I'm like dude who's this guy <laughs> yeah. he's awesome like yeah. I want to be like that he's just so sure and very like, mellow about yeah. everything yeah he was I doing. mean it was crazy I couldn't believe it I was like. Oh, this guy is awesome. He's just like relaxed. Yeah, and I think part of that is because that's, I mean, outside of his his love for his family, uh -huh. martial arts was his entire life. So yeah. for him, yeah. it, it was just like, get up in the Breathing. morning. I'm yeah. gonna <laughs> show you how to stab someone. You know, it's. <laughs> and then we're gonna have breakfast. Yeah, <laughs> it, exactly. <Chinese. laughs> but it was ingrained in everything yeah. he did. You know. Well, yeah, I mean, like I said, I mean, you could see it right away. You know, like I, said, I didn't know who he was, but he yeah. gets up there and they introduce him. He goes, "Oh my." You know, uh, Art Gonzalez, and, and he pulls out his knives and he starts doing yeah. the thing. And I'm like, wow, this guy's kind of cool. Uh, what did he used yeah. to say? He says, not, not, not the lazy man's Kali, but something along those lines. He, he started off his presentation by saying, yeah, this is not your traditional uh, martial arts or Filipino martial arts. This is your, your everyday man's or lazy man's. <laughs> something along uh, those he lines. Had a little, he always had little <laughs> zingers that he would throw out there, you know. And So that was, that was his teaching style. That yeah, was his wanted. teaching style. He's, and when he said lazy man, I think it just means that, you know, we do everything in beats and rhythms. And with the three and four beat being the longest to, okay. to actually initiate pain or harm onto your opponent so lazy man is me saying i'm just gonna move and stab you <laughs> you know i'm not gonna do this just gonna parry pop, check pop, pop, and then and come then in go. you know grab and then stab i'm just gonna get the hell away and stab you and I so, like okay you know, yeah that's and he seemed like that he just seemed like he's very straightforward about what he's gonna do right you know you know i won't do this but i'll do this and, right. and like oh okay yeah yeah this, this is easier uh done yeah, yeah now, I, let yeah. me ask you this because yeah. you you don't look that old Oh, okay. And yeah, I was wondering right? about that, too. Um, how long have you been doing this? I've been doing martial arts for close to 30 years, maybe. How old are you? <laughs> so I'm going to be... 30? <laughs> I'm going to be 50 here pretty soon. So I'm really? Actually, yeah, I am 40... I think I'm 48. So January, I turned 49. Right. Yeah, so I'm approaching 50 here. Dude, you soon. aged poorly. Yeah. That guy looks great. <laughs> Dude, I'm going to be 58. Oh, okay. So this is okay. bad. <laughs> you are American. Yeah. Yeah. Really? Okay, so you're going to be 50, you said this year? No, I'm going to be 49 this year. 49 so Two years, year. I'll, be, I'll be 50. You know, we've noticed that everybody who started wow. into the martial arts 
something happened that pushed them there. What, yeah. what happened to you? You were a teenager. For me, I was I was a coward, and so I didn't want to grow up being a coward. Right. And um, so it's a combination of things. There was the whole kung fu theater, you know, the Saturday <laughs> oh, yeah. matinee. Oh, of course. And I wanted to do these awesome things that I saw on TV. These 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 people doing. So there's that aspect. The other aspect is. I didn't know what to do if I was attacked, you know, as a teenager by a five-year-old. You know, <laughs> right, I was, right, right. If they looked at me and they mad dog me, I'd be like, oh, I don't want to fight, you know, because I just didn't have options. I didn't right, know what right. to do. You know, my dad showed me a couple of things, you know, like... Like just, fathers do. Yeah. Just and they a, were never the right yeah, things. Yeah, a couple of things. And, uh, <laughs> They're ridiculous stuff that you're mostly yelling, yeah. hey, you better do something if you're in that situation. <laughs> but what? Uh, right. Something. <laughs> yeah, so it was always in the back of my mind that yeah. if something happened, you know, so like in high school and I'd say... I don't know, my junior year, I got into a fight, mm-hmm. confrontation, and that kind of solidified that I needed to learn something. You like how he changed that? He goes, yeah. I got into a fight, confrontation. Confrontation. Yeah. <laughs> so for legal reasons, it was a confrontation. I said it was a confrontation, <laughs> but it was, my, it was my fault. I started it. Oh, there you go. You're a bully. And, uh, okay, so it wasn't a common thing for you. Like You weren't bullied through high school, or you, you weren't uh, on the, the receiving not end. Not really. Or... I was canned a couple of times, you know, okay. th- you know, but it was people I knew that did it, and they thought it was funny. And, uh, you know, I thought, oh, ha, 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 yeah, it was the George McFly yeah, thing. Oh, well, come on, yeah, guys. Yeah, yeah. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but the, the whole time, you know, you got this deep-rooted kind of thing building up and you're like I need to learn something this is ridiculous yeah, yeah. and like and I always think uh, back to that moment you know I had this guy up against the locker like this yeah. full shot to the groin full just, eye yeah. gouge full throat you know but when you don't know you don't know exactly and I just held on you know not knowing what Hoping to do he doesn't know either. and then they came and broke it up yeah. you know and it was like oh thank man, god you, you know yeah and I was thinking I think I was shaking and oh, oh yeah like I remember the, those physical, days. the physical yeah. aspect yeah. Oh, of it and, those days. and I and yeah. I was asking myself this is weird why am I doing this you know that's and, cortisol yeah and it that's was adrenaline running yeah. through your veins but it was right? weird but uh weird. I did not want to feel that way ever again. So wow. that's kind of what got me into martial arts. <laughs> How old was that? Wow. Oh, I was probably 17, somewhere around there. Yeah. yeah wow. You know, 17. I did the math. Yeah, you, yeah but you, I didn't. You're I actually, a late bloomer. <laughs> I actually, actually started. He's a late bloomer? Really? 17 is, is 28. To, yeah. Oh, well, you, yeah. You're but I'll go bloomer. back. I did start I did start Kung Fu. I did a Shaolin Vietnamese Kung Fu mm. when I was oh. about 15. Okay. And I did that for maybe... <clears throat> I did that for maybe just under a year, but I wasn't committed to it. Yeah, and and yeah. the reason why I say that is because us old timers, mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> we we usually started about fifteen. Yeah, you know, I, I started uh, about that age. Okay, you know, um, my cousin had a studio, mm-hmm. uh, Lenny Beliso, um, over in San Francisco, and since they were my cousins, it was free. So I'm like, yeah. yay, I'm going. <laughs> yeah, you know, clean um, the mats though, huh? Clean the to mats. clean the mats. Yeah, I, I yeah. had to do the old Shaolin thing, clean up everywhere. <laughs> nice. Um, but it was cool, you know, and, and and like you, I watched a lot of Bruce Lee and yeah. and all the other kung fu guys that were coming out, and then and then the reality sits in that you aren't going to be able to do any of that, <laughs> yeah, right? Like, when do we start flying around? Yeah, uh, shut up and clean the mat. <laughs> like, yeah. Okay. Well, like for me, it was I went because I I, li- I still have the uniform. It's this beautiful yellow uniform, you know, <laughs> and this yellow sash, and yeah, that's that's I wanted the uh, uniform. Short sleeves. No, it's actually no, launching no, with no, the no, white no, kung, kung fu. With the cuff. In kung fu, it's not. It's got the cuff. It's yeah. got the buttons. It's and it's a beautiful uniform, but um, I don't fit it anymore. <laughs> because it'll be because my next because question. Because of COVID. <laughs> oh, because, oh, because of, COVID. of COVID. But uh, yeah, no, I, I I did it for more for the social aspect. Mm-hmm. You know, I was like, okay, I started that a pool table at the dojo. You oh know, wow. We trained it. Where's uh, this at? Well, at least they didn't have a bar. Yeah. Well, know, it's not there anymore, but it was on the Crosstown Freeway in Stockton, and we talked out of a. It was a Confucius Church Center, mm-hmm. so we had the room there, and we wow. trained there. But at the time, I just wasn't. I realized that. <coughs> wait a minute, I have to work. To get better. I have to study stuff, and then I'm gonna get tested. What's this? You know, I just want it to kind of come into my head. I, I just wanted to like download do into yeah. my brain, and, and I was lazy. Honestly, I was lazy. That's why I barely graduated high school. I was a lazy student. I was a lazy, mm. lazy martial artist, and it just don't at the feel time, bad. That's like uh, two times in okay. a row. So you're good. Okay. <laughs> you're in good well, company. Right. He, he was yeah. a lazy student, and then he found art, and he was like, "Oh, my laziness works." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> yeah. So. Um, yeah, I just wasn't ready. I wasn't ready to go down that journey. Yeah. So what what, what got you ready? What, was it was it that, that shaking moment <clears throat> after your confrontation? Yeah, it was a little bit. It was that, and then I had a really good friend, Senior Master George McGuinan, who actually became my first uh, Dick Wireless instructor. Now, what's Dick Wireless for those people who don't speak Spanish? or? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> so it's just a, it's just a. He's saying yeah. something I have no clue. About. Okay. So you, it's just a, 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 a name given to our particular art or style. What does it mean? So it means chords. You know, chords. chords. So the cordless are chords, and um, that's why we have beats and rhythms. Everything's kind of related to uh, music. Music, chords. musical. You know, okay. chords. like a chord yeah. rope. Yeah, yeah and know. it could be a rope. You well, know, because you know the there. knots in the rope yes, that they again, match yeah. one into the other. Yeah. yeah, or if I take your finger and I start turning it, your finger will start and lock up. You get a knot here. I keep yeah. turning, you get a knot here. If I keep turning it like a rope, you're going to get a knot hit. So they're chords. Yeah. Like oh, that's pretty cool. The so, multifaceted, you know, explanation of what they can mean. Yeah, and it comes from Stockton. Like uh, is where it primarily came out. Publicly. So let, let's do a, a shameless uh, plug for your school. Okay. Talk about it. Yeah. Let's know where How to get a hold of you? Do it. Oh, oh go right here. Yeah, yeah, right, right here. here. Okay. Do do it. It. Down, we, down, we got down, a camera. Down. All right. So we have, we have a lot of people who want to show. If you want to study our particular our particular art that I teach, it's uh, De Cuerdas Escrima. Teach out of Manteca, California, at the VEA Martial Arts Academy. Uh, the name of our actually program is called the Black Wolf De Cuerdas Escrima Club. It's a, more like a club now. Mm. And so that's kind of well, what Well, what's the difference between a club and a, and a school? A club is more, I want to make it more of a club where we have fees, but if someone's going through hard times and they just need to come train and they can't pay, then just come wow. up and help clean the class and you know and do that so it's more of a like family that. oriented type thing i, I like oh, that's that awesome. that's very respectable you know and, and like we say you know a lot of times we get the stink eye because other systems aren't like that yeah mm -hmm. say, you know I, w I went to a school where i went in as a white belt but i knew a lot of stuff behind me already yeah. right and within a month i learned the katas everything the white yeah. belt should know and the and the the teacher there says you know hey how would you like to belt up Oh. I'm like, oh, if you think I'm ready, sure. Yeah. He says, okay, fee for the test, fee for the belt. Fee for the... I'm like, oh, it's yeah. one of those schools. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, and you need the new color shirt? Or you yeah. Need new ranking, right? I'm like, uh, no, <laughs> that's okay. I is dirty. Mm -hmm. But it was ridiculous, you know I mean? And, and so to hear that, yeah. that's refreshing. You know, I mean, where were you guys when I was trying to do yeah. stuff? Well, part of it is, though, I'm, I've been blessed with... <laughs> When I started taking my Kosheru Kempo, I met uh, a good friend. We became really good friends. He was a black belt with uh, Jason Cortez at school in Manteca, mm -hmm. and uh, Sensei Larry Akaya. And his daughter had a cheer school, <coughs> and he found out through my through training and teaching me, helping me rank up in Kosheru Kempo, that I taught a screma FMA. And he says, where do you teach? And I said, I cheat from our backyard. And he goes, oh, right. no, what happens when it rains? I go, we go inside and move the furniture out of the way. <laughs> and he goes, maybe you ought to come to my daughter's school and teach right. out of there. And I thought, uh, and the whole time I'm thinking, I can't afford now, this. Correct you know? me if I'm wrong. Was that the place we had the Ohana? The, they had the Ohana? The, it's a genesis for the cheer? Yeah, you, I think the dragon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then, you, know, yeah, you guys. Ohana? Yeah, yeah. They, had the, they had an event there in Manteca. Yeah, we that was the place. Yeah. yeah, the big with the springy floors. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, we didn't see you. I love those. No, I couldn't. I was, I was, I was busy, so I just okay. See, and that's why because I keep hearing about you, and it's like, right. and we're trying to figure out was that your place? Because yeah, I saw yeah. the facility, and I was like, dude, we've been there before. And he was like, no, Mike yeah. wasn't there. He's yeah. like, but we had. Another I showed Mike. up at the very end, just at the tail end of your event, just to come say hi. Right. And oh, um, okay. and then I just said hi, and, and then I left. But. Uh, yeah, I mean that's the way it works. If I know someone needs a place or whatever, and they that's cool. can help the martial arts, and I trust so, them. So you're very generous, that's what you do, and, and, and that's why. And, and I'm harping on this because you don't see that a lot. No, in this yeah. realm, you know, it's it's a rare thing. I mean, we found a few people, um, Bob Gomez mm -hmm. and his, you know, the Golden Dragon Ohana's. Right. I mean, they're like that. They're very generous, you know. Um, now finding you, but prior to you guys, we were. I mean, a lot of the some of the martial arts people are, are kind of jerks yeah no I mean, you know I mean, i'm trying to be polite about it but still you, you yeah know. well if you think about it, it i think it's an ego thing you, you get students and they and you're teaching them and if they've never trained in martial arts before they, they almost put you at a pedestal yeah you know oh Grant, oh can you show me that again yeah oh master mike can you you know and i'm like and, they, and so you got to be careful with that because yeah. i think what happens is you almost become a narcissist <clears throat> yep. if you surround oh, yeah. yourself yep. with your yep. students you tend to become a narcissist, like, this is, we're better, this is better, this is... <coughs> you, you know how we got away from yeah. that? You know how we get away from doing that? How'd you do that? We call each other Koya, which means brother. Yeah. There are no belts, no ranks of any kind. Even Danny, at his highest, you know, yeah. he's the top guy, he's still Koya Dan. Yeah. And and you don't get that. So what we're doing yeah. is we, we, we just show things to each other. Yeah. But then you also get those disrespectful students that right. call you out for being old and, you know, talk crap to you. 
this guy. <laughs> well, I think it's, I think it's, it's a, I think it's a balance. I think I think I think for me, you know, like we didn't have belts when I started in Dequest. Right. There was no belts. Really. The only reason the our belt system came about was because one day GM Art walked in and we used to play with Jiu Jitsu America and Kilohana, and they were like Art. Your students come in, and you guys are all in black. We don't know who's <laughs> experienced. We don't know who's not experienced. Right. For safety reasons, it'd be nice if we had a way to find out who's beginning yeah, students. And, uh, and so for that reason, I remember he came in. He came in with a bag of belts. <laughs> <laughs> and he just started handing yeah, up. Yeah, and he says. <laughs> Whether you knew it or not, he was he's just like, you up. Uh, George, yeah, you're like a green belt. He threw him a green belt. <laughs> you know? And then he looks in the bag, and he's like, uh, Mikey. <laughs> You're gonna be azul, which is blue. You know? Yeah, <laughs> you're gonna be a blue belt. And I'm like, okay, you know, and that's how really that's that's, that's the, how the day we became with belt. <laughs> and he goes, ah, they're telling me that when we go do these events, they don't know what color belt. You know, they don't know how good people are and how bad people are, and they want me for protection and safety. They want to know kind of how good you are, and <laughs> the belt's gonna kind of do that. So that's you know, and so that's how we started. I was going to say, did you guys ever, like, switch belts? Like, hey, can I be brown today? No. <laughs> yeah, what's, it, that's the way it started. And then, little by little, it actually became he didn't, he, but he still never had a curriculum. It was just <laughs> like, you wear this belt, and then when I think you're ready, you're going to get another belt, you know? And Wow. Uh, the belt curriculum wow. that I teach, I made from my notes and foundations of what I thought right. would make up our belt system. Right. And I hmm. shared that with him, and he goes... Yeah, I guess that's okay. <laughs> you know? I'm not gonna do it. Yeah. You go right ahead. But he started seeing. He's all, oh, that's pretty good, Mikey. You know all this stuff. Oh, stop no. And he started going. He goes, this is what I would do though. Let me show you. Me show you. <laughs> you know, but <laughs> yeah, but uh, I that's think awesome. Yeah, so it was pretty cool. But see, and, and and I love that because I I've been through the traditional yeah. stuff, and I've always hated it. Back in the day when I was first starting out, you know, back in Kempo Karate. Yeah. Um, they really only had like six or seven belts. Yeah. You look now, there's like 20, 30 belts. Yeah. I'm like, what the hell happened? Right. You know, is that, and then you see, you hear about the money thing. It's like, oh, that's why it's 30 belts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm, I'm curious though. I'm, I'm going to play advocate on the other side here. Now that you have created this belt system, mm -hmm. the way that you teach it, your mm -hmm. curriculum, how do you keep your <laughs> curriculum from becoming that? what we were just talking about this this sense of ego this sense of oh I, I need to make this a business plan more so than an actual accomplishment so for me and there's the, the, to answer that there's there's I think a couple of ways the mm -hmm. first way is that I donate funds to the school where I no. teach at you know and they don't ask me to pay monthly rent for this or that you know oh nice and wow. so the money I get I take and I buy the belts you know it's like $20 for a belt test mm -hmm. right I go to Amazon. The belt cost me fourteen dollars. I take the <laughs> remainder of that. I would give a portion to GM Art when he was alive, oh, right? And then I would put a little bit away for barbecue money. There you go. go. Buy pork ribs nice. or whatever. Nice. And so we would have barbecues, you know, before COVID, two or three times a month. And wow. I would I would load up the smoker with ribs and tri tip and pulled pork, and we just eat together. And so we after celebrate. COVID, we're coming. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you're more than welcome. And uh, we'll buy a belt if we need to. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> Can I get a purple one? So that's yeah. So to answer your question, one way is. <clears throat> Because I've been I've been blessed to teach out of this facility that I don't have to make it a business, mm -hmm. right? You know I get paid yeah. very well to do what I do working right. for the National Laboratory, and wow. so for me is that Livermore? Yes. Nice. And so for me I, it just it I was given this gift and it feels like it's my responsibility to pass that gift on to someone else. Cool. And so that's part of it. The As other part gift, yeah. is to is hanging out with people like you guys. <laughs> and being part of these groups, we're the wrong guys. Then no, but you know what I mean. Yeah. It keeps you in check when you see yeah. people. When you see these people with such humility, who have years more experience than I do, oh, it keeps God, you yeah. balanced. And oh, it keeps, yeah. it keeps Dude, you tethered you know, to reality. We, when we were talking to Master Green, yeah. Oh, this guy. Harry, Harry, Harry. Oh yeah, we can't call him Master Green anymore. We have to call him Harry. Scary. But talk about a guy who's so giving. Oh my God, yeah. He doesn't care who you are, what belt you are. None of that matters. If you want to learn something, he'll ask him a question. He'll say, oh, it hits like this. Well, as you see, it's yeah. like, and you just go, and you're like, wow, yeah. that was easy. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I mean, the fact that he says, yeah, forget the GM thing. Just call me Harry. Yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. yeah. He called out a few of us on that. And I was like, uh, sir. <laughs> it looked like he was going to punch us if he could. <laughs> yeah. really well, did. like me, even when we would do events, you know, when GM Art was live, and he said, oh, okay, where, you know, when we bow in, we got to wear a traditional thing. And I felt like a, a peacock, you know, it was like, I was like, do I have to wear my, because I have a master's red belt, you know, and so right. I put it on, yeah. and as soon as it's done, I'd take that off, and I'd just put my regular black if he wanted me in a belt. Yeah. But, um. <coughs> so what's your official title? 
Master. Official. Master. Master instructor. In okay. In particular, in, in the Cuerdas. In Are you now, did that get given to you by Art? It did. Passing, so yeah. you, you were the... the and I was actually, it was given to me before his passing. It was given to me... 2014 is where I earned my master's. So are you the top guy in, in no, the school? No, no. Uh, Grandmaster Daniel Saison, he's the next inheritor of the system. Okay. Oh, so he's the official inheritor. He's the in official inheritor that GMR <laughs> actually purposely <coughs> wanted to do it at our event. We did a Mace event. He right. wanted to make it publicly known there. So, Wow. Uh, yeah, I, you know, I hear a lot of good things about that Mace event. Yeah. Where's my invitation? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we just we just met each other. Uh, oh, yeah. It's okay. But well, the Mace event, well, so the Mace event was GM Mark's thing, mm -hmm. and uh, I actually wasn't affiliated with it at all. Right. I wasn't a, a president, vice president, or board member, but I hosted it for him at my school. Oh, oh that's cool. And so, but do I still like the idea of us getting together and sharing, so I created the VA Martial Arts Collaborative, which took on, which actually you know, kind of took over where the mace ended. Uh, and so the mace event, I left that for GM Daniel if he wants to continue oh, that. Oh, okay. You know, so out of respect for, for GM Art and me, not, uh, you know, I could just say I start calling my events mace. Right. You know, but that'd be kind of a dick move. You yeah. know, it's like. No, no, you're right. I, I, and you seem to be very respectful, so I like you. <laughs> <laughs> Good, um, I'm curious. This is just morbid curiosity in my sense. So morbid. what? Yeah. yeah. Well, because. <laughs> okay. You know, rest, rest his soul, he, uh, uh -huh. Master Art has passed away, mm -hmm. but you said before his passing, he already had already established his, his successor and even passed on his title to him. Like, what No, was... he didn't. He said upon his death, he would, he ah, would become GM. Ah, okay. I yeah. misunderstood that. I yeah. Misunderstood. No, he was, so it was, I think, a senior chief okay. or something like that that's right below GM Art and he wanted all <coughs> us to know, so he came to his senior course students, which is... Uh, Daniel, myself, uh -huh. um, George Magana, and uh, said, this is who's going to be, and we're all fine with it, you know. Because so it was just word of mouth. It wasn't even anything written down? <laughs> uh, word of mouth, and I don't know if he, if they, if GM Art actually left him something that uh -huh. upon my death, you know, you're going to, but he, he made it known, so. Uh, so there was no that's secrets. That's pretty cool. No, there was no secrets. Right, right. You know? and, cool. and granted, I think it's, it's for, for da Daniel's the one who brought GM Art out publicly to teach. Mm -hmm. Daniel came, he's, He's a fascinating guy in that he learned his, t his teachers were Angel Cabalas, oh, oh, Leo wow, Garone, wow. Yeah. and GM Mart. So he had the three primary pillars of Stockton for FMA. Right. Uh, Sor you know, you have Angel Cabalas, Serrata. Where did you get your Serrata from? Because you're saying you brought Serrata to the table. So where did that... That came from... Play? So that came... So our two primary patriarchs <laughs> of the Guardas uh -huh. were, were uh, Senior Grandmaster Gilbert Thino, in John Eliab. Gene Eliab was one of the first students of Kabbalah's. Okay. So those two guys, really good friends, <coughs> started teaching the Cuerdas, and Eliab would bring in the Serrata. And so, so there's some exercises that we do, like the four corner, they call it uh, right. six count drill. We do that stick drill that comes from Serrata. You know, oh, wow. but it's a really good drill to tone timing and skills. And the sounds like a sombrero drill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so it's it's there's some elements of Serrata that we do. Nice. You know. But oh. that's where that comes from. But so those are the <coughs> primary arts from Stockton. Now, okay. you, you seem like the kind of guy that if you see something that you're not in full agreement with, that you kind of want to change it up a little bit and, and try to fix what you think might be wrong with it. And you do that? Yeah, I'm looking for efficiencies. So when I see something, yes, I, 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 I want really to like dissect it. Well, GM Art, <laughs> the one thing I think he, that he gave me that I'm really so grateful for, and I didn't appreciate it until later in life, is he said, I am creating thinkers. I don't want you to be a cookie cutter martial art. I want you to think. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You know? Thank God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because, it, and, and, and not to knock tradition, mm -hmm. you know, but tradition can only get you so far right. in the new age of the fights. Yeah. You know that, yeah. right? And if you don't grow like they always try to tell you to do, oh, you got to evolve, but don't change anything. Yeah. How do I do that without changing? How do I evolve right. without? But now I'm hearing more and more because almost everybody that we talk to now is saying, you know, yeah, we got to change stuff. We, yeah. we, th this is kind of useless over here now, and yeah. I'm going to do this and that. I mean, you know, several uh, instructors that we talked to, like, yeah, it's time for those changes. Yeah. And it's only till now that we're hearing about this. And we didn't know because when we were changing our stuff, we didn't care what the other people said. Yeah. But now we're coming to find out that everybody feels like, yeah, they're, you know, the, the new age people saying, yeah, something has to give, something right. has to change. And the thing is, the beauty of with, with FMA, I mean, just to give my love of FMA, is Senior Master Dino said, if you don't have options, you don't know your screamo. Right. And I believe that. It's, it's, 
the keys and the answers okay. to to a conflict are there. It's in our foundation. It's it's the way we think. It's in principles and concepts. It's not. <clears throat> Uh oh, here comes a punch. I gotta do technique seven B or I gotta do <laughs> Dragon Snap's tail or you know, it's like it's coming from this angle and I've got thousands of options to for to deal with that coming from this angle. Right. You know, and that's why it was so hard, I think, for GMR with my early conversations, because I was I had the engineering mindset and I want things packaged in a constructive package in a schematic. Ooh. Right. You know, I wanna see it that way. Right. And so he taught me a little different than he taught the others because he knew that's the way I learned. That's the way You know, you. and so, yeah, in for the longest time, I think his, hesita his hesitation for me coming up with the curriculum was like, Mikey, there's it's endless. Yeah, if why you, put yeah. something down? And so you? that's what made me rethink, okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of our foundational training stuff, and that's going to be our white belt to black belt. Because now once, I, once they have all this foundation, now I can play with you. Right. You know, now I've trained you basically to be a student so so i'll tell you something crazy That's nice <clears throat> i'll tell you something crazy we do that from the very first day <laughs> it sounds nuts right yeah. like, what Good. yeah we give our students free reign we'll show you something and what what is your brain telling you about this what yeah. do you think you can do with this what can you create yeah. with this and they're like i'm allowed to do that yeah, yeah. here's a brush yeah paint, yeah you know paint, paint your own picture have yeah. fun right and, and you know and we give them the guidance that they need of course yeah but beyond that, we tell them, what is your body allowing you to do with this? Yeah. Because if you can't figure out what your body's telling you to do, you're not going to do well. Right. Right. Because if you can't move in your own skin, yeah, you're not going to move the way I need you to move. Right. You know, you the way you need to yeah, move. The way you need to move is totally different than what I'm trying yeah. to show you. And how do you, for, for you, my question to you is, how do you know where it's a limitation because of their body movement or it's a limitation because they just don't they're so new to the martial arts I'm glad move. you asked <laughs> we had a student this um, Saturday <laughs> no no well, um, we had a student a little while back <laughs> and um, he was always having troubles picking things up okay. right and I and I talked 